Hello everybody, a very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to the Study IQ IAS English. My name is Abhishek Singh and this is the second part of our weekly current affairs that is the science current affairs and in fact science this week that we call it. So in this lecture we will be discussing the top five news from the field of science, technology, environment etc which are exclusively important and relevant from the point of view of the UPSC examination. So hopefully this video will be helping you to fetch good marks at least in those questions which are directly coming from the you know uh, current or relevant topics of science and tech in the UPSC prelims as well as in the mains examination. So let us continue and first of all uh, let us proceed further and uh, let us see the first news of today. So, the first news is UNESCO to develop the ethical framework on the neurotech devices. All right. What is the meaning of the neurotech devices? Uh, let us understand first of all, and then we will understand about this news as well. So, basically, UNESCO it has decided to host an international conference on the 13th July 2023 at the headquarter Paris. Okay. So, UNESCO's headquarters is, is in Paris to develop an ethical framework for the uses of the neurotech devices that feed the brain wave data to computers through the dry electrodes and implants. So basically, there was another news recently, you might have heard about it that uh, the Elon Musk's company Neuralink, Neuralink, it had got the approval, okay. So basically, Neuralink that got the approval got approval from okay it got approval from the us fda okay us fda for the human trials for the human trials of the right of the insertable okay of the insertable chips okay so that means what that means basically if we talk about uh, this particular project that means it is possible that we are going to we are going to see such type of cases where the human brain is uh, you know facing some the interference in the form of the technical you know in the form of the technical connections established with the help of chip etc okay so that is why when the brain wave data is to be transmitted to the computers now that becomes really significant to regulate it otherwise it can have several consequences okay so what is this neurotechnology and how could it how could this technology be used for the you know human welfare or for the destruction of the human society let us find out so ne right neurotechnology it could help solve many health issues but it could also access and manipulate the people's brains and produce information about the identities emotions etc so basically as far as the mental diseases are concerned right such as the uh, alzheimers okay so in the treatment of such diseases it is possible to use this uh, you know neuro devices basically neurotechnology devices very efficiently however at the same time this also exposes our brain it is like you know it is like uh, exposing something which is inside us which is hidden inside us it is like exposing that to the entire world so once we are connecting the brain cells with the technology of the machines particularly computers or the internet then our personal ideas personal thoughts secrets all these things become vulnerable to the internet to the world wide web okay <clears throat> so that means what that means this could threaten our rights to the human dignity and our freedom of thought and privacy okay so that means our thoughts and uh, our thoughts and ideas either it could be manipulated or it could be stolen okay or it could be pirated by somebody else at the same time this is also against the dignity of the individual's life to invade the mental privacy we all know that even in india 
द मेंटल प्राइवेसी इज अ फंडामेंटल राइट इन फैक्ट द मेंटल प्राइवेसी शुड बी नो इट इट इज एक्चुअली अ ह्यूमन राइट ओके सो दैट मींस इफ वी आर गोइंग टू सी सच टाइप ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट्स देयर कुड बी द रिस्क रिलेटेड टू द इनवेजन ऑफ द मेंटल प्राइवेसी ऑफ अ पर्सन एंड दिस इज व्हाई द यूनेस्को हैज डिसाइडेड टू डेवलप द एथिकल फ्रेमवर्क फॉर सच डिवाइसेस व्हिच कुड बी लिंकिंग द ब्रेन विद कंप्यूटर इंटरफेस now if we talk about the other details so the conference aims to lay the foundation for a global ethical framework it will be guided by the report by the unesco's international bioethics committee which committee will be giving the guidelines for the setting up of the you know guidelines related to the related to the neurotechnology that committee is called as the international bioethics committee right that will be giving the guidelines related to the ethical issues of neurotechnology okay deep brain stimulation dbs that is approved to treat a number of the conditions such as the parkinson's disease such as the essential tremor right such as the dystonia right dystonia epilepsy and the obsessive compulsive disorder or the ocd okay so all these treatment all these the diseases they could be treated with the deep brain stimulation technique dbs technique where the insertable or programmable right insertable or programmable neurotech devices they could resolve the issues related to the brain functioning however at the same time there could be the potential you know there could be the potential treatment and the potential threats both connected with these dbs enabled devices so if we talk about the potential treatment of which major diseases like depression traumatic brain injury stroke you know addiction chronic pain cluster headache dementia tourette syndrome right huntington's disease and multiple sclerosis all these are the severe right severe diseases which are mostly untreatable or which actually have the you know heavily heavily costly you know heavily cost and uh, you can say less availability of the treatment is another big issue so might be possible that if the you know deep brain stimulation technique is used with the help of the neurotech devices we may get the treatment of such diseases however however at the same time there are certain complications of the deep brain stimulations like there are three distinct categories of the complications related to the surgery related to the hardware that is the device and wire and related to the stimulations related complications for example how will our brain respond to such type of the external stimulation which is trying to control the functioning of our neuro right our neuron cells so that is uh, why this particular invention is definitely required to be regulated by the common set of guidelines okay everyone so i hope you got the idea so in fact in the earlier past also unesco has uh, already developed the framework similar to the you know similar to the established global ethical for example for the human genome pro project unesco has also established the framework related to the human genome project related to the human genetic data and artificial intelligence so these are certain inventions certain breakthrough technologies which have actually intervened with the existence and the entity of the human life and that is why they must be regulated right so this topic could give you a very significant and important question in the upcoming mains examination because the regulation of the artificial intelligence the regulation of the neurotech devices these are the ethical issues as well as the technological right regulatory regulatory issues so mind it that this question or this topic actually can give you one good question in gs paper 3 of the upcoming mains examination moving to the next topic of uh, today's compilation second topic of this news session is that arctic could be ice free in the summer in the summer by 2030s say the scientists okay 
so as we all are aware now let us understand what is the basic news then we will then we will understand the rationale behind it so the study in the nature communications this magazine okay this is a magazine study in this nature communication found that even capping the global warming at 1.5 degree celsius as per the paris climate treaty that will not prevent the north pole's vast expanse of floating ice from melting away so as we all are aware that global warming has become a daunting challenge for the entire humanity and we have probably understood it later and understood it late however we have started uh, our efforts to regulate it as quick as possible to the impositions of uh, several sanctions and regulatory mechanisms primarily for example with the help of the paris climate accord in 2015-16 right so despite that it is quite difficult that we would be able to stop the melting of the ice caps particularly in the permafrost regions the biggest one of the biggest permafrost regions in the earth that is the north pole as we can see that uh, the ships or the you know at commercial activities industrial activities taking place around the arctic region particularly by russia canada or other scandinavian countries that has led to the rapid you know rapid melting of the ice caps in the nearby polar regions and decreased ice cover has serious impacts over the time of time on weather people and ecosystems not just within region but globally and how can you say that exactly so for that you need to have a basic understanding of the working of the planetary wind systems okay planetary wind systems we all are aware that in the planetary wind systems basically the frigid zone okay the frigid zone okay this leads to the moving of the air okay moving of the air towards the sub towards the temperate zone right towards the temperate or the subtropical zones and due to which the entire climatic conditions of these areas are determined okay are determined so if there would be any change in the present composition of the ice that would sever right, definitely that would definitely be leading to the change in the temperature quotient as well as right as well as in the pattern of the flow of these permanent winds called as the planetary winds we somehow we actually study that planetary winds are constant right permanent however they are permanent because the features of the earth right as well as the forces working on the earth they have been almost permanent for quite some time but it does not mean that planetary winds they never do change even a bit they do change right so here what happened here what happens that if the changing scenario will be rapidly will be will be rapid then we might face the occurrence or the occurrence of the consequences quite early as compared to as compared to the expected time so that is why this is very crucial news and uh, this information could be very much useful for your prelims examination because the prelims may be asking the questions related to that we will discuss which type of questions now the scientist described the arctic ocean as ice free if the area covered by the ice is less than 1 million square kilometers or about 7% of the ocean's total area okay now there could be a simple question from this particular topic in your prelims examination just two statements statement one that is it is expected or it is uh, basically as per a recent research or as per a recent study statement one as per a recent study the arctic ice cap is expected to melt away by 2035 statement one statement two the polar area will be regarded as ice free if there is the area permanently covered with ice cap right less than is less than or becomes less than one 
मिलियन स्क्वायर माइल्स ओके वन मिलियन स्क्वायर माइल्स सो आई जस्ट कोटेड टू स्टेटमेंट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट सेट दैट दैट मेल्ट अवे लाइक आइस कैप विल मेल्ट अवे बाय टू थाउजेंड थर्टी फाइव एंड द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट सेज दैट it is ice free right any polar area will be ice free if the ice cap if the ice cap right, is less than is less than 1 million okay 1 million square miles 1 million square miles so as you can see very very clearly that both of these statements are incorrect okay incorrect if you can add the third statement by yourself like anything anything could be added like uh, the antarctica you know the sea ice in antarctica has dropped to 1.92 million square kilometers which is lowest which is lowest since 1991 2020 average that statement is correct statement okay so such type of questions could be asked very important topic this is so that's why we need to cover it now next topic is india leads global digital payments with 89.5 million transactions in 2022 now <laughs> government of india actually runs a website mygov.in which website mygov.in that is basically the website related to you know the exchange of the popular informations or significant informations and it acts as an interface between the government and the subjects and the people obviously so this website has released this picture on the twitter handle where it says that india continues to top the digital payment charts 46% of the global real time payments are done by india the topic is important for prelims examination okay this is useful for prelims examination south korea ranks the fifth one thailand the fourth china third brazil second and india india ranks the first india ranks where 89.5 million people or uh, 5 million transactions okay itne transactions right so these many transactions actually take place that right, took place in fact in the year 2022 now moving further <clears throat> so that is basically the 46% of the global data on the online transactions but the future is even more digital even more digital because uh, we must have heard about the central banks digital currency we must have heard about central banks digital currency that was uh, basically launched by the rbi and even the smaller countries like the ecuador right tunisia and some scandinavian countries have they have already launched official digital currencies in the pilot mode okay in the pilot mode so we can have uh, an entire understanding of the digital currency thing as you can see that the china is reportedly on the anvil of launching its official yuan digital currency right and currently if we talk about the impact of digital currency initiatives of china and libra right that would be felt globally right that will be felt globally right if we talk about india so india is basically at an infection point and we can leap from the upi to the cbdc so this is basically the system right this is basically the system where you might have heard about uh, the digital currency of facebook probably right that was a uh, libra right i think uh, it is related to the facebook only you can just confirm it from the you know your sources so tech biggies may navigate their way into the indian banking system because once indian banking system permits the regular uses of the right regular uses of the digital currency as an official uh, way of transaction then might be possible that the libra or such other currencies which are introduced by the technical giants they may try to enter into the indian market and we can see the entire setup of the payment systems completely changed in our country okay now if we talk about right, if we talk about the 
further things okay so here the next news that is live from the red planet mars express transmits the first live stream what is mars express so mars express is basically the spacecraft right that is a spacecraft which is a uh, sent to the mars planet by the european space agency and this is celebrating the 20th anniversary right 20th birthday and to commemorate that this initiated something which was done for the very first time mars right that is a distant planet in fact that is a close planet not a very distant one as we all understand even india has also you know landed uh, her own mangalyaan on the surface of mars however if we talk about the mars express spacecraft this has to be one of the one of the most crucial spacecraft that gives us you know keeps giving us regular pictures from the mars however for the very first time this has done the live streaming but let me tell you that the signals from the spacecraft took actually 17 minutes to reach to the earth and most of the observations which were taken earlier they did not have they did not have the live streaming rather they were the pictures which were actually sent after a few days however if we talk about if we talk about uh, this particular incidence as you can uh, understand here that this are right there are basically two reasons there are basically two reasons that why did why did the live streaming not happen earlier and why were the pictures taken when the mars and the earth were at uh, distant locations because either the spacecraft is on the other side of the Mars or other side of the Sun or its antennas are pointed in a direction away from the Earth. Okay. So, if the spacecraft is on the leeward side of the Mars, suppose the Mars, a particular surface will be facing the Earth. Okay. Because both are the rotating planets. And if the spacecraft is on the other side, which is not facing the earth it is uh, difficult to do a live stream similarly if the mars is right if the mars is located located such that that we are having the earth then sun and then in the other part of the orbit there is mars so then also it was difficult to do the live stream or maybe that uh, the antenna right the direction of the antenna of the spacecraft that was not in the direction of the earth so then also it became difficult however how did it become possible so the live videos sent by the apollo missions right the apollo missions to the moon they have sent the live videos earlier the dart mission where the nasa crashed a spacecraft into the asteroid dimorphos that was also streamed live on the earth okay so nasa already had done it earlier but the european agencies they did not have done it earlier they had not done it earlier so this is for the first time that european agency did this and this is how it actually happened as you can see this uh, okay now have a look on this particular picture okay and you will get the clear understanding you will get the clear understanding okay now so i hope this was the picture that was taken live from the mars and uh, here as you can see this is the image that is acquired Okay, and signal was traveling in 16 minutes 44 seconds, and this was the relative position of the Earth and the Mars. Okay, so basically the observation of the spacecraft around the planet Mars that is how it was showing the picture. Anyways, so the next, so this topic actually, you know, this is very very important. You all might remember that question which was asked in the UPSC 2018, if I'm not wrong. In 2018, they had asked about uh, Denisovan, right? Denisova. Remember, they had asked about Denisova. This year, another mysterious species, another ancestral human species, is uh, making the news, and that is uh, known to have used the brain capacity almost as good as the modern homo sapiens but one lakh years earlier than the homo sapiens now that is the big news 
सो द ब्रेन बिलोंगिंग टू द एक्सटिंक्ट स्पीशीज कॉल्ड एज द होमो नेलेडी वेयर अराउंड वन थर्ड ऑफ द साइज ऑफ द मॉडर्न ह्यूमन ब्रेन द एलिवेशन कुड चेंज द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द सॉरी द रेवल्यूशन कुड चेंज द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द ह्यूमन इवोल्यूशन बिकॉज बिकॉज अंटिल नाउ सच बिहेवियर्स ओनली हैव बीन एसोसिएटेड विथ द लार्जर ब्रेन होमोसेपियंस एंड नियंडरथलिस विच टाइप ऑफ बिहेवियर आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द बरियल्स ऑफ द डेड बॉडीज एंड कार्विंग द सिंबल्स ऑन द केव्स मेकिंग द केव पेंटिंग्स एंड बरिंग द डेड बॉडीज दीज वेर रिगार्डेड एज द बिहेवियर ऑफ द इंटेलिजेंट ह्यूम सच एज द होमो सेपियन सेपियंस और सच एज द होमो नियंडरथलिस राइट हाउ एवर दिस न्यू स्पीशीज कॉल एज द होमो नेलेडी दे डिड इट डिस्पाइट हैविंग जस्ट वन थर्ड ऑफ द ब्रेन साइज ऑफ द ह्यूमन और होमोसेपियंस मॉडर्न ह्यूम राइट द फॉसल्स बिलोंगिंग टू द होमो नेलेडी वेर फर्स्ट डिस्कवर्ड इन द राइजिंग स्टार केव सिस्टम रिमेंबर द नेम दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइजिंग स्टार केव सिस्टम इन साउथ अफ्रीका ड्यूरिंग द एक्सकेवेश टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन नाउ द ईयर इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे कैन दे कैन गिव द डिफरेंट ईयर इन द क्वेश्चन टू कंफ्यूज द कैंडिडेट्स द केव सिस्टम इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द साउथ अफ्रीका स्क्रेडल ऑफ द ह्यूमन काइंड विच इज अ यूनेस्को वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट एंड कंपासिंग एन एरिया वेयर द साइंटिस्ट हैव फाउंड द फॉसिल्स ऑफ द मल्टीपल एंशियंट ह्यूमन एंसेस्टर स्पीशीज तो बेसिकली द क्वेश्चन दैट कुड बी आस्क फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक विच कुड बी लाइक दैट विच कुड बी लाइक दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल द क्वेश्चन कुड बी वेरी सिंपल दैट कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग राइट कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट नंबर वन इन अ रिसेंट डिस्कवरी इन अ रिसेंट डिस्कवरी एन आर्काइक एन आर्काइक ह्यूमन स्पीशीज राइट होमो नेलेडी राइट was discovered was discovered okay now second statement yeah in a recent discovery in yeah right that is right, leave it second statement might be that this subspecies was this subspecies was found in found in the caves of caves of right kenya third statement they were they were capable of capable of practicing okay practicing burial system and carved the cave surfaces okay so you can see the three statements here and uh, you can clearly identify that in a recent discovery this term recent discovery could be could be like that i can just modify this question uh, just a second so consider the following statements right consider the following statements regarding right regarding homo nelidi regarding homo nelidi recently seen in the news okay recently in the recently in the news okay this is the better question pattern recently seen in the news first statement is that that it was it was discovered in 2020 and it is and it is an archaic human species right it is an archaic human species all right everyone so that is how that is how the question could be done now second statement the this sub species was found in the caves of kenya third one like that so if we see this one 
तो हियर व्हाट हैपन द स्टेटमेंट नंबर द स्टेटमेंट नंबर फर्स्ट वन दैट इज रॉन्ग ओके सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट दैट इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग थर्ड स्टेटमेंट दैट इज करेक्ट नाउ द क्वेश्चन कैन बी लाइक हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट आर इन करेक्ट ओनली वन ओनली टू ओनली थ्री राइट तो ओनली थ्री स्टेटमेंट आर गिवेन हियर सो दैट मीन्स ओनली द राइट ओनली द वन स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट विच वन द थर्ड वन रेस्ट टू स्टेटमेंट आर इन करेक्ट राइट सच टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे कुड बी आस्क नाउ If we talk about right, if we talk about the uh, questions related to this one now, so here moving to the next part, right? Moving to the next part of this uh, news, so homo nalidi adults and children that were laid to the rest in the fetal position, right? Fetal, exactly like a fetus lies inside the womb of the mother, they were buried in the very same position, buried in the very same position as you can see the picture here. it looks like it looks like having a having a fetal position okay having a fetal position got it burials are older than any of the known homo sapien burials by at least 1 lakh years 1 lakh years scientists also found a number of the symbols on the cave walls which are likely to be 2 lakh 41000 and 3 lakh 35000 years old remember okay so these are the these are the findings from this particular news you can expect a question and you can see the you can see the details as well because it is regarded as a very very important invention as it can change the entire chronology of the human evolution alone if this news is confirmed is further studied and is established as the actual as the actual sequence okay everyone so i hope that this particular session has given you enough stuff enough uh, content related to your science and technology in this particular week if you like this video so do not forget to give it a thumbs up and if you have not seen the previous video do check it that is uh, with the same name present in the same name in the thumbnail right you might be seeing the name of this uh, series the science this week okay now in case if you are preparing for the upsc 2024 examination then we have got a great news for you because we are launching our uh, exclusively english medium batches and also at the same time we are la launching the batches in the hindi medium as well as in the right in the english right so you can choose your course as per your requirement just do not forget to use this code asr live if you are getting yourself enrolled in the english medium batch to avail this course just at a half price of the original original pricing all right everyone so that is all in today's session and i hope that i hope that uh, this session will be definitely useful for you and in case if you are uh, uh, expecting the content etc that how to get the content and from where to get the content just scan this qr code and uh, join my telegram channel you will get this content this file in that only okay so thank you so much for watching it Let's meet in the next week for the other news till then take care everybody bye bye and have a great day thanks a lot and jai hind